we're, we're chatting 60 gigahertz and it sounds to me like when we, when we think 60 gigahertz, we're thinking areas with high numbers of users and lots of devices that need connectivity, campuses, industrial campuses, conference centers, and so on. Uh, is that about right? Is that where you see 60 gigahertz playing? And Chris, I'm going to start with you because you actually touched on this earlier in your, in your last answer. Well, I, I, do, I do see 60 gigahertz um, uh, technology that runs on 60 gigahertz being very applicable to the campus environment. Um, I, I can think of a couple examples just to, to share them where you could use 60 gigahertz um, to great effect. Uh, for instance, you could do backhauling traffic at venues um, like uh, sports stadiums, concerts, uh, the concert stadiums, that kind of thing. Um, 60 gigahertz uh, is applicable when you're connecting a, a building to a broadband connection in, in, like a, in a way you can say it would be replacing fiber. Um, you could enable outdoor Wi-Fi hotspots. Uh, I'm not talking about the Wi-Fi, but bringing a connection to the, to the hotspot uh, that are not directly connected to, build, to a building. The thing that comes to mind is you've uh, heard of these um, sort of like drive through uh, uh, COVID pop up test uh, uh, locations where they need computers to you know, connect to Wi-Fi or like a fast food you know, um, drive through. Uh, connecting buildings to one another at a university or at a large company is a very obvious example. Um, and then something, uh, something that kind of comes to mind here is like you could, if you're a managed service provider, you can enable uh, you could bring in a new service to a customer uh, in, in a campus or in an office building where there already is service, um, but you, you, know, you don't have access to those uh, uh, wires or, or, or optics. Um, you can connect apartment buildings, uh, MDUs, healthcare facilities. Um, uh, you can deploy internet of things, um, either indoor or outdoors by you know, enabling Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Bluetooth. Um, you can enable surveillance systems. Um, you can do a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I could go on probably for another 10 minutes. I'm just, you know, rattling off the top of my head. <laughs> it's just as exciting as I imagine that would be for the audience. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Darren, is there anything that you wanted to add to yeah. that? Yeah, absolutely. So, the, so Chris, you kind of laid out some of those some of those key use cases. So, you know, what does it take to build that, right? What does it take to to put that network into a campus type of, type environment? Well, you need need three basic parts, right? First of all, you need to have a common, easy, pervasive, and universal way to access the the the, the edge of the network, and that's Wi-Fi. That's absolutely Wi-Fi because every one of these devices, you know, phones and things that we have, they all have a Wi-Fi chip in them. I mean, I'll say 99.99% because if I say 100%, someone's going to come up with one device that for whatever reason doesn't have a Wi-Fi chip in it. I, I don't know what that device is, but I'm sure it's out there. But let's just, let's just agree that every device has, has the, the necessary chip to connect to the edge, okay? So that's, that's going to be right here in our, in our, in our phone. You need that. Secondly, so, so you need the access point that provides that connectivity um, in a high density environment. So that access point itself has to be kind of special. Next, you need a multi-gig backhaul because once you get 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 people in an area, all connect 500 people connected to an access point, 1,000 people. See, now you're starting to get into the numbers that that uh, there's so much packet contention, you really do have to have a high speed multi-gig backhaul. Now, some people uh, have used uh, the five gigahertz radio to, to build that backhaul and to provide the edge connectivity. That, that works great in a lab, honestly. Works great in a lab, works great in your house. If you've got five, 10, 15 devices and most of them aren't doing much of anything inside your house, awesome, great mesh technology, reuse the five gig, Beautiful, I love it. But don't do that if you're building out a high capacity uh, public network or access network that has to service a business. So you wanna connect it back to uh, 60 gigahertz, high bandwidth, no, it's not gonna interfere with your, your access. Number three, once you build this network out, um, you can't walk away and leave it, right? So you wanna manage it, you wanna manage it all the time, you wanna make sure that that management is always on. Put it in the cloud, cloud management, because why the cloud? Uh, you could put a little PC on premises, throw a little bit of management software on there. You can probably download some and do that. But why would you do that? Why would you even consider 
putting a little piece of management software on a PC that you, you drop on site and then you forget about it. And a year later, someone kicked it over and it, it, the hard drive died and your network is down. So the cloud is great because the cloud never sleeps, it never sleeps. Cloud is redundant just by its design of its architecture. The cloud is redundant. The data centers, the, the, the servers are automatically backed up. Everything is backed up. Everything, the paths are redundant. So those are the three basic pieces. Common pervasive Wi-Fi, multi-gig backhaul, common you know, cloud management system. And you, you do those three things, you've got yourself a great, a great network management for your, for your business or your customer.